the feeling. I got no time to be chilling. Telling my homies they want. Gonna make sure we get the Because of God hoodie in there. All right, hello, hello, beautiful people. I hope you are doing well on this beautiful day, whatever day it is that you are watching this. I am your girl, your host, the main character, whatever you want to call me, the Rihanna Simone. And today on the She Who Hears channel, we are talking about one of my favorite topics, um, favorite themes, anything you want to call it celibacy so my celibacy journey and my addiction to pornography story um surprisingly you know i know a lot of people are kind of like why would you want to be talking about that and to be very honest for a long time i didn't talk about it not because i didn't want to but solely because i didn't know what to say um it wasn't until recently that i showed the video i'm about to show now um that i did that video on tiktok because it's an experience that was very real to me did a video on TikTok where I was openly talking about my celibacy journey and the experiences that I typically have when I'm introducing my celibacy to other men or letting them know about it and um it blew up and then later that day or a couple days after that I went live on Instagram um, my Instagram is right here I went live on Instagram at the Brianna Simone um, for about three hours on my way to Portsmouth and um a lot of people gave me a ton of feedback about their own journey so it only made sense to do this video um, in regards to celibacy and my addiction to pornography so i'm just going to show you that TikTok very quickly just so you could get a, a feel and a vibe because i feel like many people may be watching this because they saw this video first so check it out okay so this is for my folks who are celibate last night i was told by a guy once i told him i was celibate because i don't like to waste no time i was told do you really think that a man is gonna be with you if you're not having sex with him before marriage like i don't think a man would do that for you i don't think he would do that that's good he's not supposed to be one doing it for me but number two i know what god said about me i know the generational curses i'm supposed to be breaking i know what my life was like when i was having sex outside of marriage and it's just not my ministry anymore don't let anyone try to convince you that you're doing it for the wrong reason that you should try it out beforehand that you may not like it that nobody's gonna want you that is a lie from the enemy to keep you from excelling in the kingdom and keep you from living a lifestyle of giving god glory do not fall for it god is gonna send you a man or a woman who is on that same walk or understands it and y'all gonna be good don't let the world try to tell you how to do kingdom that's not how it works all right so if you watch that video and you are here from TikTok, right? You are here after watching that video. What is up? You are now a part of the Blank family. I don't have a name for us yet and nobody is giving me a name. So right now we're just the Blank family uh, and you are watching my channel. You are on my channel, the She Who Hears channel. Uh, I'm so excited for you to be here and for us to get into this topic. I'm not gonna waste any time because my phone storage is probably low and we got a lot to get into. Let's get into celibacy. So celibacy, what is celibacy? And side note, I am using my iPad for notes because I noticed that your girl be all over the place. What is celibacy? So I looked it up. I've been saying celibacy. I never would say I'm abstinent or abstaining from sex. I would say that I'm celibate. I call myself celibate. I say that I'm living a celibate lifestyle. Celibacy means, um, or the definition of it is God requires an unmarried person to remain celibate or in other words, to practice total chastity until married. Celibacy may also be defined as abstaining from any sexual union or sexual relations. Now, for me, I've gotten a lot of comments, a lot of DMs, a lot of inboxes on both Instagram and TikTok of people telling me, hey girl, don't be calling yourself celibate. You don't wanna speak that over yourself. Um, I appreciate all of those messages when I get it. Um, but I do want to point out that I totally understand what celibacy means. Um, and I am celibate, right? I am celibate until marriage. God knows my heart. He plans to this on my heart. I'm celibate until marriage. Once I get married, <laughs> it's on a path. Yeah, you know yeah. Um, so I, I prefer to say celibacy. That is the word I use to define the lifestyle that I'm currently living. Um, abstinence for me, it 
it just means abstaining from um, numerous things and you all can look it up as well and we can match definitions um, but I felt like abs abstinence didn't really define my reason for abstaining from sex right so obviously I'm ex abstaining from sex but until marriage because I want to honor God with my body and my commitment and disregard so that is what celibacy means um, so in layman's terms, I am not having sex. I'm not masturbating. I'm not watching pornography. I am not doing any of that, any sexual relations until marriage. Um, many people have asked me why. Um, and the sole reason is because God did not create sex for outside of marriage. Um, I know that many people, we'll get into misconceptions later, um, consider celibacy or, uh, to be unnatural, if you will. Um, but we'll get into that later. So I'll just say that for now. I'm trying to follow along with the script, okay? But I also want to go into what is sex, right? Sex is a gift from God. If you don't believe me, that's fine because today I came with a ton of Bible. Go to Genesis 128 if you can. And for all these Bible verses, I'll be reading from the Amplified Version of the Bible. Um, if you have the Bible app, you can just go to the little little bar beside the verses and it'll let you change your version genesis 128 says and god blessed them granting them certain authority and said to them be fruitful multiply and fill the earth and subjugate it putting it under your power and rule over dominate the fish of the sea the birds of the air and every living thing that moves upon the earth now i like to look up things in the concordance um so i looked up subjugate um i believe it's pronounced raw raw doll um, to rule, have dominion, dominate, tread down. That's what it means. Um, and so in Genesis 120, I know a lot of people quote it, uh, but that's what it means, right? To be fruitful and multiply, um, not just through sex, but in other means, but in sex as well, right? You're being fruitful. You are producing fruit. You are producing children. You are producing and cultivating a seed and multiply. So I, I do want to speak against this notion that God hates sex or that sex is wrong literally a lie from the enemy to keep folks from living a pure life that's committed to God before anything else. So why, Brie, did you decide to uh, uh, abstain from sex, rather, abstain from sex until marriage? So let's just be honest, eh? and I'm just going to put the laptop down. Um, what sparked my journey was really the lifestyle I live. So now let's do story time. All right. So I started being in relationships with folks, with guys, specifically, sorry, um, around the time that I was 13, I think a little bit before 13, actually. So maybe around, tw yeah, maybe around like 12 to 13. So this is outside of the, of the elementary school love, whatever else. I grew up in a very small town called Culpeper, Virginia. And um, in Culpepper, I am kin to absolutely everybody and their mama. I'm just kin to everybody for no reason. And if I'm not kin to them, I'm kin to somebody who they know or they're kin to somebody who I know, but we're not kin. It's just too much. And I just wasn't going to get into it. I'm at the time I was also very insecure. And so even the guys that I wasn't kin to, I just felt like they would never like me or um, that I would never like them or that we would never be together and all of that. So naturally, this is around the time that Facebook is popping. I'm not adding my family on Facebook. I'm not adding my friends, nothing like that. I'm fully just, just living my best life, you know what I'm saying, on social media at this young age. I probably was just coming out of middle school. And so um, coming into high school, my ninth grade year, roughly yeah, my ninth grade year i was on facebook and of course everybody and their mom was on on there like i was saying and um i would be just talking to folks whoever i would see on there um and um and talking i had met this one guy we had talked and he was much older so this is kind of where um a lot of things are going to stand out you're gonna be like that's where it started you would be surprised, right? I started talking to a lot of older guys um, because I grew up not really being the most desired out of my age group, not really having a big butt or, you know, having the, the latest clothes and things of nature it made me very insecure. Um, and so as a result, I had no choice but to one, be my authentic self, to be loud, boisterous, um, to debate anything that wasn't, you know what I'm saying, black liberation based, um, but also to be mature. 
um, that's what made me more attractive at my age. I felt like to be more mature um, and I had no choice but to be mature because nobody liked me for anything else. So I literally only knew how to be myself and that was to be pretty mature for my age, right? Pretty grown, pretty advanced in thought, all of that. So naturally when I get on Facebook and I'm interacting with folks, uh, they're, the first thing they're seeing is how mature I am, right? And that's how older, older guys try to, try to get young girls, right? Oh, you're so mature for your age. Oh, I can't tell that you're 13 or 14. Oh my goodness, you're so mature, so on and so forth. So that I hopped straight in. I was talking to guys, you know, we would um, FaceTime. I'm sorry, my mind. We would FaceTime. We might do messenger, things of that nature. And in that... Um, you know, I'll be talking to them. And so naturally the guys I would be talking to were older, maybe about, so I was maybe 13, 14 talking to, uh, eight, that guy had to be like 18, 19 year old. Um, and so, you know, we were talking and nine times out of 10, those men will be sexually active already. So naturally they're asking for pictures or whatever else. Um, and during this time, young girls and young, just young people in general are so impressionable. And so I was stuck in this mindset that, oh, if I want to keep somebody around, you know, nobody here wants me. So if I want to keep somebody around, I have to be loyal. You know what I'm saying? This is what a woman does. A woman takes care of her man and da 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 And you know what I'm saying? She got to please him and this and a third shell. <laughs> the ghetto. Um, but that's how it was. And so when... Folks would ask for pictures, things of nature. I would send pictures. Um, and that's really how it started. And this will also get into, you know, addiction to pornography later. But that's really how it started, right? So um, it would start from there. And I was like, well, these people don't go to my school. These people don't know me. So it really ain't no big of a deal. Um, wrong. So I started off like that. Um, I would jump into, you know, inter internet relationships really at that time. Um, just with folks that I talked to, it was just a hot mess. When I was 15, I came across a guy um, who I, I would call my first love for years to come. Um, I came across this guy on Facebook. We met the same way. He lived in a totally different state than I did. My close friends know about this man. Um, but we literally were talking. We were FaceTiming. We were calling each other. Um, and I kid you not was with this guy for about two years so the time I was maybe 15 to 17 15 15 17 15 to 18 I was with this guy um and he was about three years older than me so I remember one day we were on the phone two years older than me sorry roughly one day we were on the phone I was 15 and um he was like yo how old are you like I, you know and mind you this is after we had already said i love you and all that stayed on the phone 24 7 this and the third and i was like oh, i'm 15 and he was like oh you gonna make me catch a case like i uh, you know i'm about to turn 18 you know what i'm saying in july whatever else and i was like you know me I'm, I'm a young girl so i'm like hey you know i'm just more mature you know what i'm saying it, it's not wrong this and the third and um we ended up literally talking from for two years straight um and i and i cannot say and i will not say that that relationship was at all healthy outside of the age gap the major age gap and the violation in terms of age um there was just a lot of things that went on in that relationship that i would not want anybody to experience right so in that relationship i was in high school again i'm talking we are probably miles and miles away like he was further down south i'm in virginia and so you know while everybody else is living their best life in high school i'm in this you know very serious relationship because i never slept around i never was disloyal i never was the jealous type things that nature um and so now i'm with this person who's older than me um who's who's been sexually active but who also is insecure in many areas right and because of his experiences and growing up so fast um you know he had jealousy issues and security issues um and the whole nine um so we were like it became to a point where it was like codependency not me on him but him on me so it would be blowing my phone up when i'm in class i remember um he would call me on facebook messenger like facetime and he'd be like oh let me see the room you know what i'm saying while i'm in class he'd be like let me see the room 
let me see everybody who's in there you know there was one time where i was in class uh, i think it was driver's ed and oh my goodness and he was like let me see the room and i had panned it around and he was like yo who is that who's that guy behind you this and the third oh you must be sleeping with him you must be da 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 like it was a mess and so we would argue we would get into bad arguments like 24 7 we would argue um it'd be like going really well then one day he calls me out my name and now we're arguing the next day he's you know telling me he misses me or he loves me whatever else but in between these arguments and i, I don't remember at what point in our relationship that um Things were exchanged, but at some point it, it got it got there, right? Um, I felt again I was loyal. You know, we're in a relationship. We're saying that this is serious. You know, um, so naturally I'm gonna do what a woman needs to do. I'm I'm gonna make sure I please my man. And so, oh my goodness, this is so cringe thinking back on it. And so in that, um, I was we were exchanging pictures and all of that, but also um, we were like. Uh, uh, having phone sex right as as you would say so it would be nights i would be up late at night we were on two different time time schedules as well we'd be up late at night um you know doing things saying things just just literally so immersed in sexual immorality but so immersed in um just being some someone i i wasn't and just just feeding the flesh at a very 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 early age um, and so in the midst of that, you know, I would, I remember I would be up sometimes late on the phone and my mom would come into the room and I'd act like I was asleep and then wake back up, you know, like it was a, a very dangerous cycle. Um, and the only reason I'm able to be so transparent about this story is because I know that God has saved me. Um, and I know that he has literally like healed me, um, and continues to heal me from all of this, um, because it's rough, right? But we, you know, defeat the enemy by the time by the power of our testimony amen so y'all gonna get all the details um but yeah so it was just a very rough cycle um around this time you know i was also getting further into pornography because i was trying to figure out ways to spice it up with him and i right i'm trying to figure out ways uh in which i can be more pleasing or how i can take the pictures or how i can record the videos or what i should say on the phone and so naturally I am watch, staying up late at night to watch, you know, porn or to watch videos or to watch any, you know, X-rated um, shows on the TV. How perverted is this world that they had on the TV late at night, you know, and I would watch it, you know, late at night on the TV. Um, and I was constantly like taking it in like it was a book, right? Just trying to figure out ways that I could utilize it and perform what I was seeing be performed. Um, so that lasted literally for about two years. Um, you know, phone sex, sending pictures, sending videos, the arguing, all of that until my mom had blocked, <laughs> blocked his number from my phone. Um, and I just got sick and tired of it. I was like, dog, I don't got time for this. I think this might have been like right before my 16th birthday or a little bit after. I was like, dog, I don't got time for this, you know. Um, yeah, it was definitely after my 16th birthday. So how old are you when you... So this was pr probably about age 13 to 15. Um, and so like uh, maybe a good amount of months before my 16th birthday I was like dog I'm done with this you know before I went to junior year I was like I'm not doing this look we just need to be better off as friends this just ain't gonna work you know because we definitely did have a bond definitely did have an understanding outside of sexual relations and you know that's just what it came down to so that was 2015 now 2016 gets very interesting I always say that 2016 was hot girl summer before hot girl summer was a thing when i tell you breezy was wildland in 2016 and everybody everybody in our generation says that 2016 was the year 2016 2017 but specifically 2k16 and i won't lie 2016 was my best year in the flesh okay if anybody is telling you that living in sin ain't fun they lying unless they burn it in hell. Then, then they for sure gonna tell you that living in sin is not. But in the moment, in the moment of 2016 and all my activities, it was crazy. It was a crazy year. Um, so and we'll get into all the extracurriculars about why I was crazy and things of that nature. Um, but 2016 was a pivotal year because that's the year that I lost my virginity. Um, I won't get into the details in that because I, I do like to protect people's privacy and all of that um but 
had a friend we were friends for a couple months you know what i'm saying really kicking it and um i had lost my virginity to him um and it was it was it, it was a bit you know what i'm saying unwilling because in my mind right um so after after the individual that i was with for two years um really when i was getting into high school after i had broke up with him i had self-declared that i was celibate so this this word celibacy this language um this saying i'm celibate and then falling back into it is not new to me um and so that's why this video i really hope encourages folks who have said that they were celibate and then move backwards or whatever else trust me i've been there numerous times numerous times and you'll hear about it so i was saying i was celibate I was telling folks because according to me I hadn't lost my virginity you know what I'm saying nobody knew what had went on behind closed doors with me and this individual I didn't tell people I kept my business to myself and again this is a small town so nobody knew my business because I wasn't messing with anybody in this small town um so I'm saying I was celibate I felt like I was celibate I wasn't having sex but also because nobody was interested in me I was like, I would never do that with nobody in this town, yada, yada, yada. Um, so I actually did lose my virginity couple. I'm trying to think, sorry. I think it might've been after I had turned 16. Yeah. Um, but I, I had lost my virginity and um, 2016, 2017, around that time. Um, and you know, once that happened, it, the link ups, the sneaky links, as people call it on um, the sneaky links, you know, kept happening after that. It got to the point where it was, um, not like I was fiending for it, but I crossed a lot of boundaries, you know what I'm saying? Um, my mom would come out of town. I would leave the house, you know, I might bring people over the house, um, you know, and then it became just getting careless with my body to the point where, you know, I would, you know, be doing things with other people and all of that. Like it literally, once it happened once, you know what I'm saying? Whether it was on the phone or real life, it just opened me to, to take in so much more, um, immorality. Right. Um, and this goes, this speaks to what a lot of people say when they say that the flesh is never full never it will constantly want more and so that's what i was doing i was constantly being sexually active um, thank god i didn't catch anything i didn't get pregnant no scds or anything but i was being sexually active um no relationship nothing you know and so to a degree i felt like okay maybe this is wrong because I'm not in a relationship, right? And I know a lot of folks have this mentality that, oh, well, I don't just have sex with anybody. I have sex with who I'm in a relationship with, right? With my partner, with my boyfriend, with my girlfriend, so forth. I'm going to get into that later. So I lose my virginity um, around 16. And uh, uh, no, if you know me, then you know Kima. Um, but if not, Kima is my sister. Um, I grew up with her. She's not really my sister, but she's my sister, um, really my cousin, um, but truly my best friend. We went through a lot of stuff together, but specifically 2016 and 2017, we did that together. And so one day we were at the house talking with my mom um, and something had came up. I think Kima and I um, literally, lost our virginity at the same time um different days i try not to put that in, but different days whatever and we were having a conversation now everybody knows that certain things you just keep to yourself certain things you just don't talk about and so she's upstairs talking with my father um and she's basically like you know why do because we're open family hot really humble open and transparent um, and she's talking to my father. She's like, why do people say that when you have sex, you get connected with somebody? Now, this is 2016, 2017 that we're having this conversation, which will later come to pass as soul ties or anything else um, last year, right, in 2020. But we're having this conversation 2016, 2017. She's like, yo, why do a lot of people say that, um, you know, uh, when you're having sex with somebody or whatever, you're catching feelings? Um, I just don't feel like you're, you're catching feelings, you know, you know, like I, I don't feel like that's possible. I feel like it's a way for um, people, especially women, to just sleep with men and to not catch feelings, to not feel anything. And um, it was this big video. I remember posting it on Twitter. I doubt it's there because I deleted my Twitter. Um, but my father was basically like, you know, who's to say that you don't catch anything? Who's to say that, um, you know, he, he was basically saying you got a lot of men who are saying, oh, 
You only want me to wait for 30 days. You only want me to wait for 100 days. That's fine. But after that, you can best believe that they're going to be waiting to get in your pants. It doesn't matter what type of boundaries you set up. That is just how some people think based off what you say and, and how you feel about yourself, right? So he's having this conversation with her. They have the conversation. She's like, but I feel like a lot of people don't catch feelings. And he's like, or so, or, or so they say, right? And it's just dead silent. Dead silent. Because again, I wasn't in a relationship with the person that I lost my virginity to um, or the guys I was messing with um, and neither was she. So in a way, we were trying to rationalize. Like, oh, no, nah, I'm, I'm good. I, don't, I, I ain't catch feelings. You know what I'm saying? It's hot girls. Some of we doing what we want. Da, 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 da. He the one that's going to be catching feelings. No. And he was like, so they say, right? So they say that you don't catch feelings. So they say that you don't, you know what I'm saying, connect yourself to this person in, in, such, a, in such a crucial and impactful way. So after we had that conversation, I don't know what happens, but my mom was like, Kima, are you a virgin? And Kima was like, she looks at me and I look at her and I'm like, Nick, you're going to mess up now. And she's like, uh, mom's like, okay, I'll take that as a no. So you know me, you know me, if you know me, then you know me. I'm not saying anything that's going to incriminate me. I'm keeping my mouth shut. So I don't say nothing. I look at Kima, I'm like, am I my own little business? So then it's a, it's a, it's a pause in the atmosphere. And my mom's like, Brie, are you a virgin? And I was like, what do you what what do you mean like but what do you mean um and y'all I kid you not that that moment when my mom asked and and I responded uh the look on both of my parents faces is what is what broke me the most right um and clearly it ain't breaking bad enough because I still got years left to fill in the blank for um but it, it it really broke me and that was I think the first time that I actually repented you know um in terms of my sexual immorality and just sleeping around and having sex outside of marriage all of that um and later we had a conversation with my mom and she was like I just don't want y'all to to live the life that I had to live having a kid is no joke you know um getting pregnant at a young age is no joke right like i i want better for both of y'all i don't want y'all ha to have to go through this um but i do appreciate y'all for telling me right again humble open and transparent um and so that's what it was so that's 2016 27 2016 2017 that's when we first had the conversation that you know i lost my virginity 2018 this is where it gets interesting 2018 i get into a relationship um with a young man uh and we get into a relationship um what was that february 2018 so now in 2018 i am senior class president at eastern view high school um i am again a senior so 2018 Came in as a senior August 2017, graduated May 2018, um, dated this guy February 2018, and um, I, I believe our first link up, right? So the entire time we've been talking, him and I, we've been talking from November to February. We're talking heavily, all of that, um, and he meets my parents on February 2nd, 2018. I was like, I want you to meet my parents before we date. Um, we start dating literally the day that I go back to his house because um, he lives doesn't live in my town either um, We have sex for the first time and uh, I I pause and I deliberate because I'm like, you know I, I'm not sure you know if I really want to do this because again by this time I am self-proclaimed celibate I'm like no, no, thank you. Whatever else not having this conversation and so I was like, you know, uh, I don't know, like I'm celibate, whatever else. And the first thing that he says to me is, oh, well, I mean, you had sex with somebody who you weren't even in a relationship. So he gets to experience you in this way, but I don't. Y'all pray for me, <laughs> pray for me. So, you know, in that moment, it had caught me off guard. 
I was like, okay, all right, that's a little interesting. You know what I'm saying? And so from that point forward, I, I felt bad, right? I felt like, okay, I, yeah, I was, you know, having sex with this person. I was giving this gift away um, to somebody for free without a relationship. So it, it only makes sense for me to give it away to somebody I'm in a relationship with. So I was in a relationship with this young, young man until July 2019. So we're talking a whole year. Um, and in that relationship, we're having sex, things of nature. Um, he cheated numerous times. There was a cheating numerous times on his part. Um, and each time he would cheat, uh, when I would bring, I think it was about two, three times, but the first time was about a month into us being in a relationship. And I remember having the conversation with him and, um, you know how he described it neither here nor there um but i remember feeling you know very unsafe right very unsafe in terms of my body because i was like i had to share this with you um and i remember leaving leaving his house driving back it was about an hour drive back to my house um didn't talk for a little bit we ended up making up I would come down there after that, you know, continuously. Um, and whenever there was a shortcoming in the relationship, whenever, you know, I would communicate like, hey, you know, I, I kind of don't trust you in this capacity or, you know, I'm, I'm a little uncomfortable with this or um, things that nature I would get thrown off as jealous or um, not important or uh, obsessive or a uh, clingy or cry baby um and then when my feelings felt invalidated to make it up we would have sex right to make up for the emotional neglect that i was experiencing and um not being loved in my love language and being you know gaslit all of that the cover-up was sex right the apology was sex the um i'm sorry was sex the i don't want to talk about this right now was sex and so that literally served as a guide um or rather a cover-up of whatever deep-rooted issues that i had and deep-rooted issues that he had so instead of sex fixing anything right i know a lot of folks talk up talk about makeup sex and things of that nature instead of it fixing anything it further allowed us to not be adults and communicate the issues that we had with one another um and it also allowed me to stay enslaved to sex to stay enslaved to pornography but also to stay enslaved to my heartaches and my pain and my insecurities and never feeling like I'm good enough or that I'm worthy enough or that I deserve to be loved in a good way or that I'll ever experience a love that's worth it so that's what that kind of looked like I remember a couple months into us having sex being together um I, I you know I was still learning my body and so I I I don't think we at one point we stopped just wearing condoms period um so I was being very careless and I remember my mom asking like hey should I put you on birth control and I was like uh yeah she was like are you having sex I was like yeah you know and she was like all right I'll put you on birth control but I do not condone this at all and your body is a temple and you know um it sex is a gift you know from god that's you're supposed to be saving i was like yeah i know i know you know and that's kind of where we left the conversation um so i was on birth control at, for some months after that um but prior to birth control i had accidentally had a, a what i call a pregnancy scare but i don't know what other people call it and um at the time i wasn't working you know i was literally going to school doing extracurricular activities having sex in a relationship I kid you not um and so i remember one day he had um we had sex didn't use a condom and the first thing i'm thinking was like dog i'm pregnant like like i thought this that's just how it worked and so I remember calling up a friend and I was like, yo, I need money for a plan B. Like, can you get it to me? Can you give me the $40, whatever else? Um, and I remember, you know, taking a plan B. I didn't do it at all after that. But, you know, that's 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 what comes with, you know, sin and feeding the flesh just makes you want to feed the flesh more and more and to cover up any wrong that you're doing like, like God ain't seeing it, you know? And so that's, you know, took the plan B and told him, you know, and he was all right, you know what I'm saying? We got to chill out. 
we didn't chill out you know so the relationship continued with us having sex and all of that um and then it gets to march 2019. Mm -mm -mm. so like i said in our relationship um it, there was a lot of cheating um but also we just didn't see eye to eye uh, on a lot of things we didn't see eye to eye with religion right so I think it's important to know that at the time this individual was not a believer if anything I think he was still trying to find himself in the faith um, or was a bit lukewarm right the grew up in the in the church grew up in the church um, parents were in the church but you know he had family issues he had you know daddy issues um, maybe loyalty issues as well I believe he was cheated on prior to me um, so there was a lot of healing that wasn't able to take place, a lot of relationship trauma. Um, I think, you know, on top of that, he just did not have a relationship with God. And so no matter how long you try to, uh, you know, cling on to religion, it's never going to be sufficient enough to fill the holes in your heart like a relationship will. Um, so at this time, he wasn't a, you know, he wasn't a believer. A couple of times I would bring up, you know, stopping having sex and what we were doing and then we get passed off with more sex um so the conversations were already naturally hard to have when i felt god was calling me to uh, either leave him completely or calling me to better or opening my eyes to a better life and things of that nature i literally um it, it was like a it was like a, a a tug right even thinking about doing better and being better um felt like a breakup you know with this individual because i was moving up but he was staying this at the same level um uh, so you know that was pretty hard uh it got to the point where i was like okay i'm gonna just you know try to make it work um by this time so i'm sorry i didn't mention that when i was in high school he was in his sophomore year of college so i was eight 18 april 2018 um and he was 20 20 yeah um turned 21 the next year i believe so you know in in our relationship it was again he was older so a lot of things i just followed his suit i was like he's older so naturally he's a leader because he's older so and so again i was like i'm gonna just make it work you know that's just what was gonna be i'm mature i can handle this so on and so forth so 2019 i am a freshman in college my second semester a freshman year at umw and um this individual um went to a school in virginia so i drive up um to odu one weekend and if y'all know routes umw is about three hours away from odu um so i took that three hour drive in the rain um don't judge me and i got there and you know off the bat it was just bad attitude like we just got into it i was like you know what you got to add to for what's the issue i drove up here three hours you can't even give nobody a hug you know what i'm saying you push me around it was just a lot and so again to fill in that void that weekend we would just have sex and at this point um he smoked so i would i was also smoking just because he smoked um and so you know we were just like like getting high you know and having sex and things of nature um and yeah and similarly right to what i had told y'all about months prior when i had took the plan b um i didn't know whether or not we had used protection and so i was like scared like dang I got to stop, you know, I, I can't be under the influence if I'm going to forget, you know what I'm saying? What's going on and how things are like, it's too much. So, um, you know, that was the weekend. We, we argued a lot that weekend. We disagreed. Um, and before I was leaving to head back home, because this had the trick, I told my parents, it, cause it was spring break that I was going here. It was that I was going to see my friend in Virginia beach and in, in Hampton actually, sure did i see my friend in River virginia breach no i went to odu and so when i had came back home my parents had already known that i was up there um so that was no secret even though i, I avoided posting so um him and i you know kind of get into it a couple hours before i'm leaving you know um i didn't like the feeling that i was having being on campus and just how he was treating me and all of that and so um i was like all right i'm gonna leave hop in the car and um, I have a three hour long car ride 
with Holy Spirit. Now, if y'all know anything about Holy Spirit, y'all know the Holy Spirit uh, does not hold back. Okay. If you let Holy Spirit in, Holy Spirit is going to be in and, and he going to be there to stay. So three hour car ride. I'm listening to Ella Mae. That's my girl. She had dri- just dropped her album. So, you know what I'm saying? It was cranking. Um, and as I was driving, you know, and I was thinking about the fact, okay, first of all, I drove three hours to see this boy. Second of all, I'm driving three hours back. Third of all, I have no job at this point. So I'm literally, I don't know where I was getting money from. I think it was like a refund from the bookstore. I'm spending half in it, half on it, you know, to fill up my tank. You know, it, it was just a lot going on. And I don't know at what point in the car ride that Holy Spirit dropped, dropped this on my heart. Um, but I just remember driving and hearing question for you. And I was like, yep, yo, what up? And Holy Spirit was like, if you got pregnant right now, or if you found out that you were pregnant right now, would you be happy with this person being the father? Now to give y'all some backstory, um, Around this time, like I said, I was getting closer in my relationship with God. Not nearly as close as I am now, but I was getting closer in my relationship with God. And so I've always known that I've been called to family. I've been big on family. I've been big on wanting a big family, uh, wanting a legacy, continuing, you know, the legacy that I my family has and just healing and all of that. So naturally, family has always been put in my heart since I feel like day one. Um, and so... Obviously, I know what comes with sex, right? And my mom said, if you, if you don't want to have no kids, don't have sex. Um, clearly, your girl ain't listen. And so, ideally, right, people would think that Holy Spirit would have said, oh, what if you figured out you were pregnant right now? What would you tell your parents? Or, oh, if you found out you were pregnant right now, you know, what would you say to him? But instead, Holy Spirit asked, if you were pregnant right now, would you be okay with this being the father? And without hesitation, I was like, no, I wouldn't. And Holy Spirit was like, so why, why are you, why are you living this life? Why are you having sex with him? If, if you are with this now, now mind you, I've been with him for about a year now. If you are with this man and y'all are having sex, you've been with him for a year. Y'all are having sex. You met his parents. He's met your parents. Y'all have Y'all very immersed in one another's lives and one another's family's lives, right? And if you got pregnant with him right now, despite age, despite not having the resources, despite the finances, you don't want him to be the father. You don't know how problematic that is. And so in that, in, in that answer, right, Holy Spirit showed me literally all of the ways um, that I was outside of God's will. Right. And Holy Spirit was like, you, do you think God wants you to be driving six hours to see a guy? You know what I'm saying? He not put no gas here in tank. He doesn't love you enough to meet you halfway to pick you up. Do you think, do you think that this is God's best for you? Not just the relationship, but the lifestyle that you're living, the lying, the, um, you know, the cheating, you know, the not cheating on, on the individual, but cheating on myself, the lying to your parents who you've been the closest to, who you've never had to hide anything from, um, the, the beating around the bush, the not talking to your friends, right? Around this time period, I was so immersed and just committed to the relationship that my friends didn't even know he cheated on me until about a year later. Um, you know, so so all of it, right? Um, because again, the flesh is never full. The flesh constantly feeds on all of it. So when you open the door to one thing, right? When you open the door to sex outside of marriage, you're literally opening the portal for every other thing because your your flesh is constantly feeding off of it. So that's what that's what mine was doing. Um, it was like, you know, God doesn't want you to, to have to lie. You don't, you don't talk to your friends. You don't meet your, you don't hang out with your family. You're not doing your work one time. You're skipping class early. You're texting in class. You're not paying attention. Um, you're smoking now. You know what I'm saying? You might start drinking. Like, where are you? Are you that lost in whatever you're in where you feel like, this is the life that God wants you to have. 
And so on that car ride, again, I don't know at what point this hit, but on that car ride, um, I had made up my mind. I was like, okay, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. And so I got home and dealt with, you know, the looks and the comments and where were you and all of that. I set my room up because me and my brother were switching rooms at that time. Um, and I was on YouTube just scrolling and I saw Pastor Mike Todd's relationship goals. Now, this is not second relationship goals. This isn't relationship, relationship goals reloaded. This is the first relationship goals. Like when he was in the old church and you can barely hear folks from the crowd or from the audience, you know what I'm saying, clapping. Um, and so this is, this is shortcut past my tie, you know what I'm saying? Um, and so I listened to the first, the first one. Um, I'll pull it up right here. It should, you should be able to see it. But the very first one, um, and he talks about purpose and plans and provision um, and, and sex being in a container. Because um, when it's out of a container, it's like a dam. You know what I'm saying? It causes, you know, when it's outside of the dam or the container or outside of marriage, it's a flood and it, and it can kill people. It can injure people. It can't be contained. Um, and so I had listened to that. And I got convicted right off the bat and I officially made my mind up. I texted him because, again, we were, at, we were together at this point. I said, hey, I want to talk to you about something. Um, we ended up calling. He ended up calling me or something of the sort. And I was like, hey, um, I don't want to have sex anymore. He was like, you know, joked about it. Was like, OK, LOL. I was like, nah, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm being very honest. I don't, I don't have, have sex anymore. You know, it's not what God wants me to do. That's not where I am. That's not where I want to be. Um, and yeah, I just want to let you know, because at that point I had made up in my mind and I had really already started disconnecting, but I had made up in my mind that this wasn't something I was going to compromise about anymore. Right. Um, and that, most importantly, this wasn't just for me. This was for everybody after me. This was for my legacy. This was also for my friend group, you know? And so I, I had made the decision. Um, him and I broke up in a couple months later, July, 2019, um, kind of rough breakup, but July, 2019, we officially broke up. Um, and so, you know, from March, 2019 to now I've been celibate, now, let me tell you, it has not been an easy go around. OK, not at all. Um, and being celibate, I really had to um, deal with a lot of stuff that was in me outside of a man. So I chose to stop having sex, things in nature. It wasn't until July um, that I had finally given God my yes, totally, right? My yes to his will, to his purpose, to his ways, to his correction. So by July, you know what I'm saying? I go to the NAACP National Convention in Detroit, it's lit. Um, and I'm immediately trying to, you know, hop back in like, oh, he's cute, da, 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 because this is my first time I've been single in a year, come on now. And um, I really had to check myself. That was the, literally the first place where God was like, oh, you're insecure. Yeah, you're super insecure um, and you don't like your body and you second guess the words that you say and you're self-conscious and that's why you don't wear this. Or that's why you talk like this. Or that's why you chase men instead of letting men pursue you. And that's why and, and you got daddy issues and like I'm talking laid it all out. Um, and once I came back from the trip, I actually was talking to my mom and I was like, you know, I, there's a lot of stuff I had to work on. You know, I'm very insecure, you know. Um, and that's when I finally gave God my yes. And he's been working on me for a long time, as you can see. Um, but that's really where it all started. Okay. So again, that's where it all started. But I do want to kind of transition our this conversation past story time and into some really, you know, tough topics about a celibacy that I see some people having, some conversations that folks are having, but some conversations that folks aren't having. So first, I want to talk about um, why God 
does not want us having sex outside of marriage. Um, and before I get even get into that, I would recommend listening to Pastor Mike Todd's Relationship Goals, the original version, uh, but also Relationship Goals Reloaded. I'd recommend that you all listen to Pastor Jay Flowers. Um, he did a uh, sermon called The Sex Trap. Um, But he also has a beautiful catalog of sermons and just words straight from from God um, as the oracle. Like he is a dope pastor. Um, So I would definitely encourage you all to listen to those videos. Um, If you want me to go, you know, if you want more of a detailed explanation of why and why not inscription, all that. I am not here to provide that for you. I'm just here to briefly give it to the folks who may not watch those videos. So sex again and, and and let's just get into the misconceptions of celibacy um sex is not a bad thing and if you don't know the devil does this thing where he sees what god created and he perverts it the devil perverts everything and so god created sex what the devil will do is say okay god created sex for marriage but what if God created sex outside of marriage, you know? And so the devil will many times take something that God created for a specific reason and he will pervert it so that we will misuse it and then let it be a tool against our own, a a tool for our own demise, if you will. Um, So God originally created for sex to be for marriage. Sex is a gift, not a means to end. It is a gift to a marriage, a union that has been consecrated and confirmed by God, right? Marriage is a covenant with a man, a woman, and God. It's not a covenant between a man and a woman. Anybody else is a man, a woman, and God. A triangle, right? The man is submitted to God, ideally. The woman is submitted to God, ideally, before they even get together. Once they are together, they are a reflection of God's love. And God says, hey, y'all need a gift. Have sex, multiply, you know what I'm saying? Enjoy it. It's enjoyable. Enjoy it. Bask in it. You know what I'm saying? Have kids and then repeat the same cycle. Teach them how to love me. Teach him how to love me. So on, so forth. They'll go. Do you, do you catch my drift? Cool. So sex is a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift. Now, if you know any better, you nine times out of 10 as a mother, father, whoever you are, would not give a child, a baby, a glass vase. Why would you not give the child, a baby, a glass vase? Because if you give the child, a baby, a glass vase, the glass vase is going to break. They are not going to know how to hold the glass vase. They're not going to know how to protect it, how to set it up on something, how not to slam it. They don't know what all comes with the glass vase. But you know, however, when you put the, the glass vase in the hands of a baby or a toddler who does not know what comes with the glass vase or how to protect it or how to hold it or how to cultivate it, what will happen is when that baby drops that glass vase, the glass will end up cutting the baby, right? The glass vase that was used to, you know, hold water, to hold lemonade, to uh, hold, uh, you know, flowers, whatever else, the glass vase that was used as a gift for something that's already beautiful, right? The glass vase being sex, um, used as a gift to amplify something that's already beautiful, flowers, AKA marriage. Um, Once it is dropped, or mishandled by somebody who is not prepared to handle it, not mature enough to handle it, who has not done everything it needs to take to mature enough to care, you know, to hold the glass face with, with, um, to hold the glass face with care. Once they drop it, what was once beautiful and used to amplify something that's already great ends up being a weapon. Does that make sense? It ends up being a weapon. It ends up hurting when its intention was never to hurt. And similarly, that is what has happened with sex in this world. Not because God created it 
to be bad not because god didn't create sex not because uh, sex is bad in and of itself or urges are bad in and of itself or desires and passions are bad in and of itself but when they are not properly submitted to somebody who can handle them or to the person who gave them or when they are not properly handled with care because we do not know everything and we are not equipped to handle certain things we end up dropping it and it ends up hurting us instead of amplifying something good. Y'all catch me? So when Brie and her brokenness and her insecurity and her pain and her heartache um, and her generational uh, curses that she has to break, generational trauma and her lack of healing and her lack of self-confidence and her not knowing who she is in God and being submitted to that identity and submitted to that image, Brie picks up sex. Brie picks up sex. And instead of using sex as a, as a gift in marriage or putting flowers in the vase or putting water in the vase and things of nature and letting it be admirable to the masses of how, you know, it makes the flowers look so beautiful. Brie picks up this glass vase and all her brokenness and her hands start slipping and it falls and breaks and it ends up leaving bruises on Brie. What are the bruises? The bruises is, um, you know, more insecurity. The bruises is depression. The bruises is never feeling enough. The bruises is never being healed by relationships. And so now instead of just giving the glass vase, or rather instead of me never taking the glass vase from the counter, right? Because I took this from the counter. It, it wasn't meant for me at this time. Because I wanted to take the glass vase from the counter, and because I wanted to drop it, I now have to deal with the bruises on me. Now, the good thing about this is that although I took the glass face, although I misused the glass face and, and did not have the marriage or the credentials or the maturity to hold this glass face, even though I took it, even though I broke it, um, even though what was used to be beautiful is now cutting me, right? Or is now um, the reason that I'm bleeding, I have a savior, I have the blood of Christ who covers me and is willing to heal me if I would submit and repent for what I've done, right? Um, and many times people make repentance sound like it's this big thing, you know, and Pastor Mike puts it beautifully. All it is is to uh, say what you've done wrong, right? To confess your sins and then to turn from it, right? And so that was the thing. When I was selling, saying that I was celibate, I'm celibate, I'm celibate, I'm celibate. One, I didn't know what celibacy meant. I did not know what celibacy meant. And two, I mean, your girl was clearly saying, oh, I'm celibate, but still having sex, right? And so, and me repenting in March, when you know once the holy spirit dropped that word on me and repenting i didn't just say oh god i'm so sorry for having sex and you don't want me to do that no at the time i still didn't think it was wrong for real i still thought well i'm, I'm in a relationship so i'm safe instead of just saying oh god i'm sorry i said i'm never going to do this again i'm not going to be outside your will i'm going to do all that i can to make sure that i'm not outside your will in this capacity again not because i don't understand why but because i know that and, and i later came to find out that if it's hurting god if it makes god cry if jesus is present when i'm going through this and doing my sin and doing my dirt if this upsets the father then it upsets me because i'm a child of god right i just want to clarify that because i know some folks um maybe have said that they were celibate and then double double back on it because they didn't really know what it meant or what it came with um but also because a lot of folks um did not understand the power of sex uh, i know soul ties have came up in in recent conversations in terms of social media and all of that um but i really do want to speak from my personal testimony that the people that i slept with the the people i've done things with really really 
did a lot to my mind, right? To my emotional state of being that I've really had to purge myself from. And thank God you can't see what I've been through. Um, but I had to purge myself and get God to purge me and heal me from a lot of the things that I held on to myself. The insecurity that I, I picked up from, you know, sexual relations and a relationship that I was in almost two, three years ago or four years ago. I am just now getting free from four years later, you know, um, and that comes from sex. That also comes from just joining yourself with somebody who is not your person, who is not your husband. And I'm not talking about somebody who you think is your husband. I'm talking about somebody who has a ring on your hand signifying that you have made a covenant with that person and God. I'm not talking about playboy friends. I'm not talking about play girlfriends. I'm not talking about if God told you that this person was your husband, but y'all ain't married yet. It does not count. That person is not your husband. Person is not your wife until y'all is husband and wife. Okay. Um, but that I was basically taking in all this stuff, mating myself, getting connected with somebody who is not my husband, who is not my partner, um, and then ending up feeling hurt or feeling heartbroken because my heart has had to go through a divorce and go through a breakup that was never supposed to happen because I was never supposed to be connected to somebody who is not my partner in this way. Does that make sense? I hope it does. So that is one of the reasons or one of the misconceptions that I really had to push back against this idea that sex is bad, that God created sex to be bad, or that your urges are bad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if y'all read the Bible, but if y'all read the Bible, song, song, songs of Solomon is a perfect example, right, of, of safe, safe sex, right? Safe sex being sex had in the covenant of marriage. Um, Again, check out the videos because they can better explain everything into detail. Um, I will also say that sex cost me my peace. It cost me uh, self-confidence. It cost me probably getting into a couple schools because I was so attached to sex and pleasing my my flesh and the cravings that I had and just trying to do one, one last sneaky link, one last link up, one last picture, one last video, one last phone call that I literally was was just chipping time off of doing the things that God called me to do. Um, so that is what comes with that. I'll also add in, I do want to give some Bible to this because um, I, I know a lot of folks are still like, okay, but why celibacy, right? Um, why purposely choose to not please your flesh? Why purposely choose not to have sex? Trust me, y'all. I know that sex feels good. I, I just told y'all that I was having sex. I know that it feels good. Folks don't have to convince me. Folks don't have to remind me. I know. How do I know? Because I still deal with these urges. I don't want y'all to think that just because I am abstaining from having sex until I'm married um, or that because I'm celibate, I don't have urges. I don't have desires. I don't have thoughts. I don't have flashbacks um, or, or that I just don't get hot and bothered. All of those things are very true. All of those things are very real and they're very human um, and they shouldn't be passed up. Right. And I'll get into that later and escape plan how I deal with all of that. Um, but I want to bring up another thing. The most important thing is that I made this decision not on my own, but because God called me to the same way he calls all of us to be celibate and to life, to live a life of celibacy. Right. Um, First Corinthians 6, 12 through 13 says everything is permissible for me, but not all things are beneficial. Everything is permissible for me, but I will not be enslaved by anything and brought under its power, allowing it to control me. Food is for the stomach and the stomach for food, but God will do away with both of them. The body is not intended for sexual immorality before the Lord, and the Lord is for the body to save, sanctify, and raise it again because of the sacrifice of the cross. I personally believe that 1 Corinthians 6, 12 through 13 says literally all of the things, um, some basically, you know, why I do this, why I'm living this lifestyle of the best way. Um, and I do want to add that this ain't just for me. This just ain't like, oh, that's what Bree doing. You know what I'm saying? Bree just doing that because you want to do it. No, no, no. I'm doing it because God called all of us to live a life like this for all of us to flee from sexual immorality. And Paul says it here, right? In layman's terms, Paul says, yo, everything is permissible for me, right? I can do whatever I want. 
I have free will. That's what a lot of y'all saying. Y'all agree. You know what I'm saying? I can do whatever I want. I have free will. I'm grown. You know what I'm saying? I can sleep with whoever I want. It's nobody's business. I don't care what anybody else says. It's my body, yaddy. Can't nobody tell me what to do, this and the third. But what I love that Paul does is he said, yeah, I can do whatever I want. I can have sex. I can have sex if I want to. I can sleep around with whoever. I can call somebody up right now and do whatever I want to do. But not all things are beneficial. Everything is permissible for me. I can do whatever I want to do. But I will not be enslaved by anything and brought under its power, allowing it to control me. And so when I'm pleasing the flesh, what I'm basically saying is, I'm pleasing the flesh. I'm submitting myself to you so you can have your way. Therefore, I'm allowing you to control me. And Paul basically says, yo, first of all, I got authority because I'm I'm in the body of Christ. You know what I'm saying? So I already got a certain type of truth that's coming with me. But most importantly, yeah, I could do whatever I want to do. But if it ain't beneficial, why would I do it? And I think that's the place where I, I got right it it became a place of not even fearing god um but just having a reverence for who god created me to be and the intention of my body and my creation yeah i can do everything yeah i got free will but why would i use it to beat myself up yeah i got free will but why would i use it to lead to more heartbreak yeah i have free will but but all things are not beneficial for me i could jump off a bridge right now because I got free will. But is it beneficial for me when I know that I'm going to jump off this bridge and drown or I'm going to jump off this bridge and break my legs? Is that beneficial? No. You would say no. So why do it? That's basically what's Paul, what Paul's saying. Don't hate me. They hate Paul. Right? The body is not intended for sexual immorality before the Lord. And the Lord is for the body to save, sanctify, and raise it again because of the sacrifice of the cross. So very quickly, now that we kind of hit that, I want to go into the pros and the cons of celibacy. Pros. By being celibate, I have been able to get closer with God than ever. By being celibate, I am denying the flesh constantly. I'm denying my pride. I'm denying my urges. I'm, or rather, I'm receiving it. I'm saying, oh yeah, I feel hot and bothered. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm really turned on right now. Uh, but you know what I'm saying? God God doesn't want this for me, right? This this is not going to be beneficial for me in the long run. And by constantly denying my flesh and saying and not saying, oh no, I don't feel this, but saying I feel this, but I'm not going to let it control me. I'm able to let God make me more like him, right? To let him make me more holy and more pure. Um, So I'm able to have a a certain level of closeness with God. When I was having sex outside of marriage, I was like literally like, I don't know if many of y'all feel it, but in the first few times before I was grieving the Holy Spirit, I would like get convicted. I feel like guilty. Like, dang, what did I just do? Um, In some cases, you know, I would feel like nasty, like, oh, like I need to come out of myself. Like, But that's conviction, right? Because we are grieving the Holy Spirit because those are not things of the Holy Spirit. Those are not things of God, right? Our body knows. Our body, that's committed to the Holy Spirit, knows. Like, hey, 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 I ain't built for this. You know what I'm saying? I'm not sure many married people have have this feeling, you know? Um, But allow me to be closer with God, right? Once I stopped doing that, I very rarely got convicted for those things, right? Very very really got you know i'm saying convicted uh if i get convicted it's more likely because i got bad attitude i got more heart checks to do but not because i am willingly choosing to you know uh sin against myself and all of that um when you know better you do better so i get closest with god i get zero to no distractions in terms of um just thinking right now obviously i have other things insecurity lust um you know pride all of that but you know for the main point i get zero to no distractions when it comes to thinking about um what i need to do because ideally i'm winning this battle in my mind i'm fighting this battle in my mind saying when i get hot and bothered i'm going to leave the room when i feel like i'm getting turned on i'm going to pray and ask god to to change how i'm thinking 
if I feel hot and bothered, I'm going to get up and find a glass of water. I might leave the room. I might get off the phone. If I'm feeling hot and bothered, I'm going to send an SOS to my best friend. She's going to call me and just talk to me about something else. I am finding escape routes so that I can get myself rid of distractions because I know when I get hot and bothered, I feel like I need to act on that immediately. Um, so that goes to, uh, you know, being strengthened through via self-control, right? Um, because ideally, you know what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just not going to do it. I'm just not going to do it. Um, but literally by practicing telling myself, no, hey, we're not doing that. No, hey, stop thinking that. Hey, I know you're feeling this. Let's, let's go ahead. Stop. Let's go ahead and feel something else. Let's feel this water. You know what I'm saying? Coming down our throat. Let's, let's feel that. Nothing else though. You know what I'm saying? By doing that, I'm teaching myself, hey, body, you're not in control of me. Christ is in control of me. Mind, you're not in control of me. God is in control of me. That is who I submit to. Like Paul said, I do not submit. I do not allow the flesh or things that are outside of God to, to have me under its control. I am under control of it, right? So that is um, one thing. Um, I'm strength and self-control. Um, Paul puts it in this way, and I'll come up to it later as well. He says in 1 Corinthians 9, 24, 27. Um, uh, oh, let's read 27, sorry. But like a boxer, I strictly discipline my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached the gospel to others, I myself will not somehow be disqualified as unfit for service. What I love the most about this verse is that he says, I strictly discipline my body and make it my slave, meaning I make it serve me. If I say body, we ain't doing this. Body ain't doing that. Um, so that after I have preached the gospel to others, I myself will not somehow be disqualified as unfit for service, right? So I'm not letting my body control me. I am in control of my body. I'm speaking life into that and to me constantly definitely helped out with that self-control. Um, another pro, no babies, no ties, no STDs. You know what I'm saying? I, I have sex, so I have no babies. You know what I'm saying? I ain't having sex, so I'm not getting connected to you in this way like you my husband because you're not um i also had a deeper value for purpose um for god's will self and time for myself um had a deeper purpose and understanding of god's time and the purpose of relationships according to god right i stopped seeing things as just oh i'm just hanging out with him um and i really started to be more intentional right because when i say when you're celibate and this is another pro you baby i don't waste time right like that TikTok said that was the guy that i was talking to um briefly and i bring it up personally i bring it up right off the bat like hey bro i'm celibate what's that mean oh i'm not having sex until marriage get out my face you know what i'm saying for me personally that's my favorite thing to say because it weeds away people but also when folks try to stay around um to get in my pants thinking that i'm not serious about it it further confirms to me that i should be waiting on whoever god sends me instead of trying to you know what i'm saying shuck and jive and and boo up with these guys who are really just there to manipulate me in some way shape or form to coerce me out of the promise that god has for me right so by having self-control and making this decision i'm also allowing god to constantly weed people out and be like yeah these people are going to take you back to here um, and being able to recognize where i was and that that wasn't god's best allows me to constantly choose god's best um, as a result i'm going to read first corinthians i'm all in corinthians because paul was preaching i'm going to read first corinthians 15 through 20 just because i'm about to wrap up the pros um Paul says, do you not know that our that your bodies are members of Christ? Am I therefore to take the members of Christ and make them part of a prostitute? Certainly not. Do you not know that the one who joins himself to a prostitute is one body with her? For he says, the two shall be one flesh. But the one who is united and joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Run away from sexual immorality in any form, whether thought or behavior, whether visual or written. That's good. I'm going to come back to that. Every other sin that a man commits is outside the body. But the one who is sexually immoral sins against his own body. 
Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is within you, whom you have received as a gift from God and that you are not your own property? You were bought with the price. You were actually purchased purchased, sorry, with the precious blood of Jesus and made his own. So then honor and glorify God with your body. Again, celibacy all in all is not anything different from anything else as a believer, right? Celibacy is just another way to honor God. I honor God by how I love people. I honor God by waiting to have sex until marriage because that's how he designed it. I honor God by loving people because God loves people. I honor God by forgiving people because God forgives people. Many times we'll try to do all the things that feel comfortable. Oh, love people, forgive people, be nice to people. And we try to skip honoring God with our body because we think, oh, well, it's no different. Similarly, right, you honor God by what you eat, right? Over consuming greed over consuming unhealthy things does not honor God again right Paul says your body's a temple so a lot of things make your body sick make your physical body sick your emotional body sick your spiritual body sick all of that adds to your body you were bought with the price you ain't even buy you how you gonna sit here and try to you know what I'm saying abuse a gift that you didn't even buy that's silly uh so Sorry, that's Ebonics for basically what Paul was trying to say. He was trying to say, y'all is dumb. Y'all didn't even buy this and you're going to mess it up. That's what he was saying. Um, so yeah, that is just all in all. Celibacy is honoring God with your body saying, hey, um, the flesh, you know what I'm saying? These urges, these sexual urges of God, I'm going to go ahead and give it to you. Um, and the best thing about God is that he knows. He already knows. So you telling him like, hey, you know, so I'm kind of feeling turned on. He can be like, yeah, I know. Get up and leave. He's not going to beat you up for urges that he gave you. Uh, Pastor Jay Flowers says it beautifully in the sex trap. He says, I stopped telling God to take away the urges. I told him to manage the urges because I'm going to need all this horniness. I'm going to need all this, all this feel good, all this hot and bothered when I'm married because it's going to be a gift for my husband. So I'm not telling God to take it away. I don't want him to take it away, but I do want him to manage it. And when you have to manage certain things, you de develop more muscle, you develop more honor and reverence for it as well, because you don't get it all in one rush. And you have to be intentional about what you get and how you handle it, right? Now, very quickly, I'll just go over the cons of celibacy if, because I know folks like Bree, celibacy can't be all that good. I'm gonna be honest with you, right? Um, I talked about controlling urges can be hard. It can be hard. Um, that's why it's important to have accountability partners, to recognize your triggers, right? What turns you on? What makes you feel hot and bothered? Um, what is it that you need to get rid of, right? Um, so yeah, controlling your urges is hard. It's tough. Trust me, I know. Um, and I can't say that it gets easier. I can't say that you have a God who can handle the urges. If you got to talk it out, write it out, do whatever you need to do, but do not lean on your own understanding or your own might to try to control it. Like, oh, I'm going to just sit here with this dude, you know what I'm saying? Although I'm really turned on, I'm, I'm going to just fight it off. Your flesh will embarrass you. You will end up in that man's bed after being celibate for six years. And you're going to be like, oh my gosh, what happened? Baby, you're not strong enough to handle you. That's why it says greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. But if you allow your fat, your flesh to be fed, then what you're basically saying is that flesh, I am submitted unto you. Do what you will. Right. So controlling urges can be hard. You don't have to do it by yourself. That's why you have Holy Spirit. Trust yourself. Um, but this also leads to um, setting boundaries, set boundaries. Number one, know, know what turns you on. What turns you on? What gets you hot and bothered? Number two, figure out what that is and then create an escape plan before it happens. My mentor gave me this advice. Create an escape plan before you, you get hot and bothered, right? Because you won't know until you're in it half the time. If you know that uh, when Money Bag Yo says a particular word, you know what I'm saying, with that country accent, you, you start getting hot and bothered, you start feeling like you need to take your clothes off, maybe you won't listen to Money Bag Yo. It's time to go ahead and delete them off the, off the catalog. And that goes for anything. It could be visual. Um, so for me, uh, in my battle with uh, pornography, I knew that certain sounds 
um, certain sounds. I can watch cutscenes anymore. Cutscenes in particular, movies, shows, um, anything that was suggestive of sex, I literally would have to cut it off. I had a no tolerance zone for certain songs. I'd be like, hey, turn that off. I can't listen to that, whatever else. You had to take that initiative to set those boundaries and to take your feelings seriously. Your urges are real. Your flesh is real. Your desires are real. And so because of that, you have, you have to make up in your mind, I don't want this to control me. I need to do whatever it takes to make sure that I'm setting myself up to be in safe spaces where I'm not having to get turned off and having to constant, constant, constantly, Jesus, leave. Um, so setting boundaries, right? You might have to change what you watch, change what you listen to, who you listen to, what time you listen to. I know sometimes at nighttime it can be really tough for me. So I had to stop saying, I'm, I'm gonna stop getting off, start, I'm gonna stop getting on the phone with guys at night. Once nighttime hit, don't call me. You know what I'm saying? That's for some people, it take all that. For some people, it don't. Like I say, it ain't it ain't personal. It's spiritual, right? So setting boundaries. Um, and then personally, I would recommend not being with somebody who isn't celibate. That's just the lifestyle that I'm living. Um, I've tried being in a relationship or speak talking to someone in a you know in an intimate way. Um, who wasn't celibate, I would not recommend it. I don't recommend it to the masses. Um, but yeah, because um, it can be hard trying to battle with your flesh and his flesh. It's just a lot. I, I would not recommend it. Um, and then lastly is sometimes it can make you feel like an outcast. Um, I think it's important to realize that uh, it's fun being an outcast sometimes. Uh, being sold out for God and, um, you know, living life totally differently then the folks in this world can be hard um, for younger folks on here, for folks who may be in friendships and relationships where, um, you know, you deeply care about those people and you are trying to figure out if you're going to make this decision. I'm telling you, it is going to be hard, but you ain't never going to fit in. If you're even considering um, committing yourself in this way, you were born to stand out. You were born to change the world. And very seldom do people who follow the rules of the world uh, make history, right? Or or make history in terms of the kingdom. You know what I'm saying? So know that you're going to be an outcast, but you're also going to be an outcast in terms of how God blesses you. You're also going to be an outcast in terms of how your family is blessed and how people call you blessed and how you are, you know, you receive a, a good reward for what you're choosing to do. You're always going to be an outcast. You might as well be an outcast for God. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, yeah, that is what I have to say about celibacy. Now, we are uh, deep in this, y'all. I did not think that this was going to go so long, but low key, I did. Um, so, yeah, now I want to transition. But Oh, sorry. Before I transition, I want to just tell my folks, um, if you are not going on to the next part of this video, who are considering considering celib consider considering celibacy um that I can wholeheartedly tell you that it's the best decision I've ever made um not just for uh me but for my family and for my future husband um and for my relationship with God um it was the first step to me fully opening up and developing a strong relationship in God and walking um to be spiritually mature um, I decided to be celibate, not just for myself, but because I would be, I will be the only woman in my family outside of my mom, um, <laughs> who, you know, was celibate before getting her husband that, that God created for her and, and has for her, um, that my kids will be able to follow in my footsteps, that my kids' kids will be able to, to follow in my footsteps and not experience the pain and the trauma and the heartbreak um, in the separation from God that I did, I would not wish that on my worst enemy. I've seen what sex outside of marriage can do, not because sex isn't good, but because we are not equipped to handle something like that outside of the covenant and outside of the container that God originally put it in. Whenever we try to use God's gift or anything that God says, um, against him or to be defiant or to use it outside of its originally intended purpose 
we set ourselves up for failure and we set ourselves up for separation from God um, in some way, shape or form. Never total separation, but, you know, we may not be as close. We may be living in sin and closer to, you know, getting snatched up by, by the devil. Um, so I want to encourage everybody. It's not easy, but I'm willing to walk with you if you need anybody. Um, my Instagram is at the Brianna Simone. Um, there is the sexless tribe. Um, and this is where the giveaway comes away. Um, the sexless tribe is a app and an Instagram page. Absolutely beautiful for folks who are abstaining from sex, um, and who are celibate. Uh, I am actually doing a giveaway. So I am grabbing one of the shirts off of there that I will drop somewhere in one of these corners um, that talks about waiting, right? Wait with joy, wait with patience, wait with anticipation um, because I think somebody needs that. So for this giveaway, basically you are to like and subscribe, like this video and to subscribe, share it on your platforms, any social media platforms you have as someone who just needs to hear this. Um, but also comment a question, comment a question down here because next week I am not going to go on for this long, but I'm going to answer some of the questions that you all may have about celibacy and I'll do it on my YouTube, but I believe I may also post it as well. Um, to get thrown into this, this drawing or into this giveaway, um, you do have to like, comment, and subscribe. I want you to comment a question that you have about celibacy or pornography, um, and addiction to pornography, my celibacy journey, and just questions about celibacy in general. Um, and put your Instagram name there as well. That way, if you win, I can contact you and get your shirt size. Um, and I will announce winners next week. Um, if you want if that's okay uh, so i'll ask everybody's permission but i will announce winners next week and you will be getting one of the sexless tribe shirts because shout out you know what i'm saying shout out to the sexless tribe you know what i'm saying they the gang um so yeah so like comment and subscribe in order to be put into this this giveaway you must comment a question about celibacy or pornography and drop your Instagram. I have to know who you are, who I'm talking to, um, and who I'm sending this shirt to. Before I close, I want to read um, 1 Corinthians 9, 23. Um, when I was preparing for this, and this is the first um, thing that I really prepared for, and I was telling God that I, I want this to touch somebody, um, and I want this to reach somebody who uh, might be the same age that I was when I was getting into this, um, and uh, you know, has been looking for a sign or anything like that. I, I want this to touch somebody. Um, and I know that my transparency might seem too raw or too explicit. Um, and I would apologize, but I'm not apologizing because I feel like if I had transparency like this, I never would have gotten as far as I did. Um, and that the devil wouldn't, would not have had a hold of me for so long, but we, we thank God for grace. Um, uh, this is first Corinthians 9, 22, 23 I believe this amplified um, to the week I became as the week to win the week I have become all things to men so that I may by all means in in any in any in every way save some by leading them to faith in Jesus Christ and I do all this for the sake of the gospel so that I may share in its blessings along with you um, so to the folks who are down um, down bad and struggling with addiction and struggling with sexual immorality. Um, I got transparent. I got deep um, just like you so that I could win you over and that you can know that you're not by yourself. Um, like Paul said, I have become all things to all men so that I may by all means in any and every way save some, right, by leading them to faith in Jesus Christ. And I do all of this for the sake of the gospel, not for myself, for the sake of the gospel so that I may share in his blessings along with you. I gave y'all Bible. Um, I gave y'all transparency. I gave y'all smiles. I gave y'all teary eyes. Um, not because I wanted to guilt trip you, but because I just wanted to share my testimony because I know that it is somebody else's. Um, I just want to remind you that we serve a great, we serve a great God. And that if I'm telling if he there's a lot of stuff that I did not put in this video just because I just did not have it in me. But if he can do it for me, he can do it for you. There's nobody that's too dirty. 
you haven't watched too many videos you haven't canceled yourself out you haven't slept with too many people you haven't um been too sexually immoral you there is never an enough for god he literally died for all of it there's not one thing where he's like oh i ain't died for that he laid down his life for all of that he was on that cross um you know laying his life down he was thinking of you in this moment struggling warring in the spirit and fighting and I want to encourage you in this fight to keep fighting and don't fight by yourself. Call somebody, get involved in a small group, um, get involved with me or somebody um, who can walk with you and lead you and help you and support you. Um, but most importantly, get connected to God. You can't do any of this. You can't overcome of this um, without God. He is going to be your God, but you have to allow him to be Lord over your life to be willing to submit you have to be willing to give up the most vulnerable pieces of you trust me i know i'm having to go through it now that is how he heals and you can you can trust him with it i can assure you so that is it for my celibacy journey um if you are watching this on the back end past the friday then know that i still love you equally i'm glad that you watched this video and i pray that if it didn't bless you that you send it to other people so that it can bless them um, if you need anything from me, my Instagram is at T-H-E-E-B-R-I-A-N-N-A-S-I-M-O-N-E, -E -E, also known as She Who Hears, also known as Spitfire, also known as Breezy Two E's One Z One Y. You know the vibes. Um, I love y'all so much. God is about to do great things in your life. You are amazing. It's never too late to get right with God. It's never too late to commit yourself to God. It's never too late to turn around. He is the God of second, third, fourth, eighth chances. Come home. Come home. It's worth it. And you're going to love it here. You're going to love it here. For sure. For sure. But all right, y'all. I am headed out. This light is bright. And we were in a new setting today. Hopefully, we'll be back in our original setting, a.k.a. my room, next week. Um, but until next time, you all, hope you enjoyed this video. Although it was long, it's going to help somebody out. Um, and we out. Peace. I got no time to